What's up guys, welcome back to another episode of Anything But ASIC And today, today, uh, let me just start with a prognosis um, I know I always talk about how FPGAs are the solution And, you know, whatnot You know, uh, that we shouldn't be using ASICs Because uh, it's just a one giant scam for the people that sell the shovels to mine to just make a profit off of even easier these days because uh, they can upgrade the shovel by just starting off by giving you a shovel that doesn't work properly <laughs> and then just upgrading that pro shovel to its maximum p potential as it goes so prognosis over um, we're gonna jump right into it and today we're just gonna we're just gonna mess around with some fpgas yeah that's right the qm tech spartan 7. now qm tech they don't really they assume that you knew what you're doing they assume that you downloaded the 48 gigabytes of xilinx bloatware that's actually free and they assume that you are some master at, uh, you know, just writing Verilog and getting everything up and running. Well, fair enough case. Um, you, you generally don't get into FPGAs unless you have some kind of, um, was it elect electronics degree or computer science degree or some kind of advanced degree from some kind of college. It's just like, where are your papers? Where are your papers? <laughs> so today I'm going to go through and kind of show you that it's not completely impossible to figure out FPGAs, how to do, how to go through the development environment. It, QM Tech does give you some examples of how to actually get into this, how to actually work with this. And you generally just have to like, um, point and click and follow the instructions to get the examples going through. So the first one I'm gonna go through is the UART example. Um, as you can see, there's Spartan 7 there. Also have it over here. We got it all the way from China. I got this from China, sent over, took about three weeks. I got this two years ago, actually. I've been holding on to a lot of FPGAs, actually. Uh, story for another day, but um, QM Tech. And see, the core board is the XC7S15 uh, Spartan 7. And I believe it had 128 uh, lookup tables. And see, 100, it's Q grade 40 to 125. This is a um, core module. I mean, it doesn't really have anything on it besides the, they leave you with the UART chip at least. The CP, uh, was it CP2012? This from, um, was it Sil Labs? And the software on that's free. And if we were going to make an FPG miner, most likely you would push the information out through that UART. And there also is also power coming in, but you probably would want to use, as you can see there, Jumper 1 and Jumper 2. Jumper one and jumper two, well, pin one and pin two on on JP two. That's a uh, positive and negative. You've probably seen that on a Raspberry Pi as well. You use that to put in a little bit more extra supplemental power if you want to. Uh, so basically, there's not really much instructions to this. What you basically end up doing is um, you download the the. Xilinx Vivado Studio, which like I said, up to now, since they've done a unified unit, um, it's 48 gigabytes, so you might want to have some uh, gigablast going. <laughs> Otherwise, it's going to take you a couple of days to download it. You can download the, old, the older versions, which are like 6 gigabytes. It's still, it's a big file. <laughs> it's a very large file. So to get started with this, you take your JTAG, um, your JTAG, uh, what do they call this? What do they call this? 
uh, platform cable, USB platform cable, which is this thing. Um, you have to buy that separately. Nope. And if you're going to buy this one separately, make sure you get one with like the multi head here. That way you can plug in some, you know, uh, any situation comes up, you can plug into like uh, just about any uh, just rando Xilinx FPGA. The J-type the pins are usually always the ones, the TMS, TDI, TDO, TCK, Ground and VREF, and uh, Dil Digilent has their own um this is their own um what was it platform cable that they made for this just this uh these um six pins to program the fpga directly um so that one's a little bit cheaper and a little bit more up to date i hear it's a little bit faster i haven't gotten to that but definitely worth looking into and it's a lot smaller it's not this giant box but uh, Okay, so basically, like I said, uh, QM Tech assumes that you know what you're doing. So they tell you just download the file. They don't tell you how to actually open it. Um, download the zip folders. And basically what you got to do is once you get the zip folders open, you got to go and open a project. And you got to go look for that project on your computer. And once you got your project open, it should look like this. Oh, 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 it's already done. And um, open it, Smith Design. Now this thing will eat up a lot of RAM. If you don't have like 16 gigabytes of RAM, you're gonna be waiting for the synthesis to happen and everything. I went ahead and just went through this to see if anything would happen because the LED um, project wasn't quite working the way I wanted it to. Oh, that's pretty nice. And QM Tech's course, they give you all the um, constraint files and everything you need to actually get this up and going. You just have to know how to do it, how, where to go to start this. Um, the files they give you are a little bit out of date for the newer downloads of Vivado, but um, this unified um, package that you get from downloading Vivado, the 40, 48 gigabyte one, it allow you to automatically update the files because it, st it still reads them as Vivado system files. And see, we're here, and see, I was generate bitstream, and what do you want us to do next? Open target. Okay, so now we're going to connect to the FPGA board itself via JTAG. Let's see, open heart manager. Open target. I'll connect. Let's see if it'll all connect real quick. Oh, oh, we got a green light. It's all connecting. Connecting the server. Oh yeah, it's going. And once all that's going, up, oh, yep, yeah, it sees it. Now you do have to I would go back to Digilent and go through some of their um some of their tutorials. Because you have to, if you're going to use Linux, you have to um, separately um, change the permissions on your USB, um, your USB operations or USB, uh, what's, the, what's the word I'm looking for? USB permissions, there you go. You have to change the USB permissions on Linux to allow this um, programmer to connect to the computer, to connect to JTAG, to connect to Vivado. So there's a whole sequence in that. It's not very hard, it's not very long, just follow the instructions. And uh, we're gonna upload a bitstream. Everything seems to be ready, let's see. Open target and... Upload bitstream, you can program device. 
program device. All right, so I'm going to program the device. Where does it say program device? Program device. Okay. And it's programming. The device is now programmed. There's now a bit stream on that device that's sending back UART. I gotta wonder. I gotta wonder real quick. Let me. You know, I'll do that next video. I'll open up uh, Putty and see if if it's actually pushing anything through. But yeah, that's basically going through Vivado on just your little core board or whatever you can get just to test out some programs, test out your Verilog uh, program abilities. I'll, I'll solder on some headers, maybe get some LEDs going up soon, but yeah. There you go. This is the start of how you make your own FPGA miner, quote unquote, I'm doing quotes, quotes, <laughs> if you ever wanted to. Um, I'm sure people at Squirrel has done this and, oh, FYI. FYI, if you're ever going to start this and get serious about it, get, get, don't, don't do it on a 15 inch screen. Just FYI, because this stuff here, it takes up a lot of real estate on the screen. These uh, boards, there's a lot of extra information there that you're not going to see right away. And you're going to want a bigger screen, something like a 32 inch eight uh, high def 32 inch and um that's it that's it you, you programmed a bitstream we found the bitstream programmed the bitstream and all the information was generally there you just had to know a few ins and outs and i'll see you guys next time